All right, we got Mark Sobel and Andy Trang on. Uh, Mark, I was just talking about uh, on the Maryland website how great that video was that told the story. Very sad, but very uplifting at the end. And um, it's something that you've been able, your wife said it best, that it's kind of kept the thoughts of your son alive after his tragic, tragic uh, passing away. Well, I was... I was very fortunate that uh, when uh, when we wanted to tell the story, Jesse Atkinson, who I played football with at Maryland, he was a kicker, went on to play for the uh, Washington Redskins and with the uh, New York Giants. His company is called Three Penny Film Films, and I approached Jesse about telling this story because he's got a passion for telling stories, and he did a he did a wonderful wonderful job. He's he just took it up, took it upon himself to 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 really get an understanding of what, what occurred. And uh, he wanted to tell it uh, in, in, a, in a very unique way. And uh, I'm very grateful to him. So the scholarship continues. And uh, we'll, by the end of the segment, we'll have you give out the address and we'll get uh, help all we can with donations. But one of your winners is on the phone of tonight, and her name is Annie Trang. And Annie, tell us about how you came about applying for it and how much that scholarship has meant to you because I understand you're doing some great things. So I came across a scholarship by applying on the CMS website and I didn't think I would get one and when I finally did I was very surprised. Uh, the amount was around $3,000 but the scholarship itself means so much more to me because I've been able to connect with a very welcoming family. Um, Dr. Sobel has been a wonderful mentor. I've gone to him with so many questions. Um, and just having that connection there has really inspired me to continue uh, on my path of becoming a physician. And truly, I think I would love to like, continue uh, holding on to like, Mark's name and uh, using the Sobel family name and making sure I hold up that honor. <laughs> Well, you know what? I I echo your sentiments. This is the this is not only a number one turf family. This is a number one family that I know. They're just wonderful, wonderful people from A to Z. And uh, you know, to relive that uh, takes a lot to relive that tragedy all the time, Mark. But it's it's done so much good for other people. Andy, what is your specialty in medicine? It's medicine, right? Yes, uh, I'm currently pre med. I haven't decided which specialty yet. Um, but I've done a lot of shadowing in primary care and neurosurgery. Oh, wow. You picked a good one there, Mr. Sobel. <laughs> uh, actually, actually, I don't make the choice. Right. Uh, uh, Bob Inventino from the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences is the gentleman that makes the choice. And uh, he uh, and I, I have to say that, that the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences really helped me with the, uh, with the scholarship and uh, encouraged Mary Grace and I to get involved with it and, and They've been they've been wonderful leaders. Um, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, Bruce, but 85 percent of the undergrads in the College of Computers, Mathematical Mathematics, and Natural Sciences conduct research, and they uh, or they have internships to conduct research. Uh, the the department is just wonderful. They have the astronomy, the atmosphere and oceanic science, biology, cell biology and molecular genetics, chemistry and biochemistry, computer science entomology, geology, mathematics, and physics, all under that college. And uh, that's the college that I graduated from uh, when I was a major in zoology. And uh, just to be associated, uh, I'm currently serving on the board of visitors with that college, and to be associated with the individuals in that college has just lifted me up. And, 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 and it goes for the whole University of Maryland. I was very fortunate to be associated with the athletic department, have former teammates lift me up after I lost my son. And, uh, and to, have, to have such a wonderful department at, at Computer Mathematical and Natural Sciences to, uh, to understand and to support my family as they have. Um, it, it's just a wonderful family at Maryland. Tell real quickly, tell the story of Frank Romano and what happened. Your son died very, very suddenly of uh, a virus to the heart. And uh, tell the story of how you got the kidney to a former teammate or a former Terrapin football player. Well, well. When I when I arrived at the hospital, they uh, they told me that Marky was unfortunately uh, he was brain dead and and immediately went on to the organs. It was it was like it happened so fast. So uh, when they discussed with Mary Grace and I whether we wanted to donate his organs, 
it, it, it just popped into my head, Frank Romano, because when we tailgated at the Maryland games, Frank Romano would come to the games but had to go to dialysis from college in College Park. He comes all the way down from Connecticut, but uh, he would go to dialysis, and I, I knew of his kidney condition for five or so years that he was on dialysis and waiting for a kidney transplant. So he, he popped into my head, and I asked the nurse, is it possible we can give a kidney to Frank Romano? And she said, well, where is he? I said, he lives in the Northeast. I really didn't even know where he lived. But uh, through Coach Frajan and Coach Edsel, they were able to con- And then uh, Paul Volano, his dear friend, and uh, Denise Del Vecchio helped me get the, the connection made, and we were able to locate him. And uh, they, they, uh, they told him to go right to his transplant center, which was Yale Transplant. And uh, he did. And uh, the miracle of it was that he was a match. And, uh, and they, uh, they, they, uh, they were able to transport the kidney right from Marky right up to uh, Yale Transplant Center. It's a, it's a story the- that's beyond incredible. Andy, to win, that sco- to win that scholarship, you have to be quite honored because uh, you know the history. And I understand knowing the Sobel family it's probably the best part of the scholarship, correct? Yes, definitely. No doubt about that. <laughs> right. And uh, so, Mark, it's a yearly scholarship. Is that correct? or is it? That's correct. Every year, uh, the scholarship is awarded every year to one student that is uh, 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 in need. It has to have, be a need-based scholarship, and it's merit-based. Need and merit. And uh, so far, there have been two recipients. Tomer Lagziel is now in medical school. At, at, at an American medical school in Israel, where he's from, and uh, his fiance is from, and so he's in his first year of medical school and plans to come back and do his residency in uh, pediatric oncology in the states uh, once he finishes medical school and he's doing well and he's made us very proud. And uh, and Annie is Annie has just received Annie. Do you want to talk about what you just received? Sure. Uh, so recently, last night, I received a notification that I am a Fulbright finalist. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Well, that is fantastic, Annie. I wish you the best of luck. That is really, what an honor. What an honor. Hey, the committee's doing good, Mark, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. They're wonderful. They're wonderful. They're just, uh, they're making us so happy, and uh, we're very proud. And uh, it's just, uh, every year there's a dinner. At the uh, at the college, and um, they uh, they invite the uh, recipients and the donors of the scholarships, the endowed scholarships. And uh, last year, I was the keynote speaker at that dinner, and I had a wonderful time. And uh, it's just uh, it's just great to be a part of this college. It's just outstanding well, in Mark, every way. Yeah, from Mark, the dean, from the dean down. Mark, you know, is because uh, I love you, and you're always. Help me with anything, Maryland. And boy, did we have a good time in Jacksonville when Jalen Smith hit that three, didn't we? Annie, Mark, Mark, pick me up and kiss me. All right? <laughs> uh, I'm not making it up. He picked me up and kissed me when he hit that three. That's right? true. <laughs> but anyway, as always, you know, I'll be a contributor this year. Tell everybody where they can contribute, and I implore all my Terp Talk listeners, Whatever you can give is great. You know, whether it's whatever you can afford to give, uh, it's a tremendous cause and you do great things for kids who are really, really qualified and really, really maybe might might need that uh, assistance. So, Mark, tell them where they can donate. They can donate by going to uh, giving, (coughs) go go to giving.umd.edu. Again, it's giving. Dot umd dot edu, and you on the top right you search for Mark Sobel. In the search bar, you just have to put Mark or or Sobel S O B E L, and it'll come up. The Mark Sobel Jr. Memorial Scholarship will come right up, and uh, any any donation is so so appreciated. Well, Mark, I thank you for coming on and telling the story. And uh, Andy, congratulations. Good luck on the Fulbright. And keep your keep your good work up, and uh, we're all proud of you. And uh, uh, we'll move on. So, Mark, thanks a lot for coming on and arranging Annie to come on. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Annie. All right. Thank you. Take care, Bye-bye. guys. Go Terps. All right. Go Terps. All right. All right. Well, got some bad news to report here. The Orioles just went down 5-3, to three, but it was a valiant effort as Trey Mancini went to dead center field for a three-run homer uh, to make it closer uh, finally, was that off Schumacher? 
Yeah. Schumacher was still, no, he wasn't off, but they brought in another pitcher and the rest is history. But Trey Mancini is just off to a great start. But let's get him planning on first base. Let's get him in that lineup where he knows where he's going to play every day. And, you know, he will be, you know, what a great player he is, off to a great start, much better than last year, I'll tell you that much. But those do go down four to, uh, five to three. They're now four and two. And if you'd have told me we'd be four and two after six games on the road uh, at a place, Toronto, where we lost all 10 games last year, and at Yankee Stadium, where we did almost as bad, uh, I would have said you're drunk. You're not thinking straight. But the Orioles love how they're playing. All right. Unfortunately, three runs of that bottom of the eighth came back to haunt them, or else they might have uh, come back to win that game. But. We won't complain too much. All right, before we go, my final thoughts are Under Armour announced its first 11 girls and first 11 guys selected. This is incredible. Maryland on attack. One of the Under Armour stars is Hannah Lubacher from Forest Hill, Maryland. Also going to Maryland. Then you got Shaylin Ahern from Glen Elg going to Maryland, uh, a midfielder. You have uh, Emma Shetig from McDonough. Where else? Maryland always gets a great one from McDonough every year, it seems. And finally, Catherine Flaherty from Eastport, South Manor, New York. Five out of the top 11 players going to Maryland. Incredible. Kathy Reese does a great job. And for the men... Uh, on attack, and they'll need them. Then we'll need another attack because Louis Dubik is graduating. We'll need some depth, and that's Dylan Palinetti from Ward Melville School in New York. I watched some of the uh, video on him last night. Super player, and uh, that's going to do it. Maryland has to bounce back against Michigan this week tonight. Maryland is playing at Virginia. That's number two, Maryland, against number seven, Virginia. That game is on the ACC network if you get it. And uh, we'll have a report of that final score tonight. But Maryland bounces back against Kevin Conry. I feel sorry for Kevin Conry to have to catch Maryland after a loss in lacrosse. But uh, sometimes that loss does you well. And sometimes that loss wakes you up, and I think this is one case. They did bounce back. They got it to 8-7. to seven. They just could not get over the hump. Credit to Penn State. They brought, of that 4,000 people there, they had to have at least half the crowd. They came down in droves, and when you consider it was Penn State's first win ever over Maryland, you can tell you know how important that game was for them. And... Uh, so I think that's about does it for today. Opening day tomorrow. Stop by the Miller's Deli Stand. I mean the Atman's Deli Stand. I'll be there. All right, Atman's Deli, and uh, I work it. I love it. Have a great time, and we want to see everybody there. Stop by. At least say hello. We will be ready. For Bear, we will be ready with hundreds of sandwiches because I know opening day is near sellout or sellout. We shall be ready. That's Atman's Deli. It's on uh, right behind Home Plate. And check it out tomorrow. I'll be there. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you Saturday morning on the Sports Maven.